What is the best worst party foul moment you have ever witnessed? I saw a guy snort a whole Xanax then throw a pool stick through a flat screen. I don't know if that counts. It does. A friend of mine threw a party at his house a few years back. The house was split up into apartments. The first floor being one apartment and the second floor being another. Both floors had a deck out back, one right above the other. I'm out in the backyard smoking a cigarette and talking to someone. I look over to see a few people drinking immediately behind the first floor deck. I happen look up at the second floor deck to see someone walk out. He then proceeds to whip his dong out and pee off the back of the deck onto the group of people below. I was at a house party where the token hated roommate immediately got smashed and was stumbling around. He goes into the bathroom for about 30 minutes and comes out giggling like a madman. He loudly declared that he left an upper decker in his own bathroom boy where his room is pee, and he thought it was the funniest thing on earth. He didn't find it so funny the next morning where they all but forced him to clean it up the moment he was awake. I know a guy that wiped his butt with a nice white face towel in my friend's washroom because he was too lazy to look for toilet paper in the drawers beneath the sink. Also been to several parties where people got mashed and just tore the freaking house up, stealing and breaking crap for the heck of it. That to me is the ultimate party foul. If someone is kind and gracious enough to offer you a roof to get drunk under, snacks, seating and company, you better dang well leave the place in relatively good condition. My sister once wiped her butt with one of our nice bath towels. When I walked in and saw it, yep, she left it there so we could score it I guess. I noticed a full box of tissues sitting on the toilet tank. She said she didn't see them but honestly I feel like a careful person would figure out all the options before electing to wipe their butt on the first one to present itself. I was at a party in an apartment complex. I stepped out to the backyard for a smoke when I had a powerful urge to pee. I was already hammered at this point and didn't give a frick. Had only one shoe on, for instance, and I found a nice remote corner in which to relieve myself. Uh, now I'm done. I suddenly hear the door to the backyard smash open and hear, what the frick are you doing I zip up and turn around to find the super. Now, this super was already a legend for being an butthole, but that night, he was getting ready to hit the town. And being the middle aged Romanian he is, he had a 70s tuxedo style shirt on with the buttons down to his chest. He had his hair slicked back and was sporting a huge gold chain, Miami Vice style. I freeze. Think, frying Dutchman. Think, I just stammer. No English what did you say no English? Me no English I'm Asian. I'm saying this in my most broken Chinese accent imitation, helped on by untold shots of Jameson. Where are you from China? Says I. No you freak. What apartment? Now my English breaks down utterly and I still gesturing and pointing and saying crap like. My friend. His friend. His place. Up. Up there. After 5 minutes of this he glares at me and kicks my butt out of the apartment complex. Which is fine. Except I'm wearing one shoe. Don't have my keys, wallet, or phone. I see the super lock the front door and the backyard door. I have no way to contact my friends at this point. So I walk across to the neighborhood bar. The bartender kinda recognizes me. I explain my situation and he just shakes his head and gives me a pint of beer. He lets me use the phone to call my friends but they're already too hammered to pick up. So I end the night standing across the street from the apartment building. Hiding in the shadows of a tree so that the super doesn't spot me. And waiting for someone, anyone, to enter the building so I can sneak in behind him. Later on, my friend tells me the super went around asking everyone if they knew the P Chinaman. TL. DR. Alcohol turned me into a one shooter legal immigrant. In grad school a few friends moved into a house together in their second year. The house was a death trap waiting to happen. But that is another story. They threw a party a few weeks after getting their keys, and for some unknown reason a group of 10-12 freshmen had caught wind of the party and just showed up to get drunk. I arrived late to the party with some friends and immediately noticed two things. A. It is a complete sausage fest, all of the freshmen that arrived are male. B. The faint but very distinct smell of poop invades my nostrils as soon as I open the door. Not dog crap or cat crap, human crap. I guess that is the curse of having a very sensitive nose. I seek out one of the hosts, Will, and he gathers his roommates to make sure no one has clogged a toilet or upper decked them. 
All of the bathrooms are clear, yet the smell remains and it is growing stronger. My friend Alice, one of the very few women, figures out that the smell is coming from one of the freshmen in the living room that is drunk and dancing with a huge load of crap sloshing around in his pants. Not just a little poo, a huge saggy bulge that is clearly visible through the kid's khaki slacks. The smell in that room was overwhelming, but somehow, none of the freshmen seemed to notice or care. We all just stared at him slack-jawed for a minute before Alice just walks up to him and tells him he may have had an accident. He flips out and bolts out the door leaving little splotches of poop every time his foot hit the floor. The poop had run down his pants leg and was just beginning to drip off the cuff when we caught it. I left. They clean up and kicked out all the rest of the freshmen. And he was forever known as Poop Frash. Sometimes his royal poopiness. Sometimes PF. Sometimes PF Changs. Eventually everyone just called him Changs and no one remembered why. But he remembered. A friend of mine hooked up with a guy and then told him she loved him. At which point he avoided her at all costs. The next weekend, she shows up at a party in his dorm. Crawls in his roommate's bed. And cries and vomits for 3 hours. Getting her home was a blast. A too fair. As some of you know, if you pop the top of a beer bottle with the bottom of yours, all the beer comes out. So the idea is that you have to drink it all right? This one girl goes up to my friend with the right idea, and pops the top of his beer bottle. But I guess she was a little bit too drunk, and just shatters the entire bottle in my friend's hands. My friend, who is now bleeding, looks up and goes, I My hand is bleeding. Someone get me another beer. A friend did a heroic job of finding a trash can to rafe in last New Year's. Unfortunately, it was a mesh trash can. I hate when people use my dad's name as a term for vomiting. A friend was getting pee off with a guy who was throwing a party. So when everything calmed down, and most people were gone or asleep, he got the butter. He microwaved the butter, then poured the melted butter into a bowl, then shat in the butter carton, then poured in the melted butter, and let it set in the fridge, then left. I was there, he shat. Maybe the butter didn't look right after, but I don't know, because we left. And yes, he got the idea from the urban legend. There was this guy on my swim team in college. Super nice guy, but terrible with women. He used to be really shy about changing in front of the rest of the guys in the locker room, and would always change under a towel while the majority of the rest of us wouldn't. Then one day the towel drops and we all see he's got a huge dong. At first we were all flabbergasted that this quiet semi-awkward prototypical nice guy was so well endowed. No one could keep it to themselves and pretty soon all the girls on the team knew about his big secret. At the next big swim team party, after a night of drunken teasing and congratulations, I think he felt emboldened. So in an attempt to distract the other team's opening shot at Beirut, beer pong, he whips his dong out and starts spinning it around helicopter style. His spinning dong accidentally knocks over all six of his team's cup and they instantly lost. What a dong. I was having some friends over for dinner, and one of them began to eat his salad with his entree fork. The rest of the party was absolutely horrified. I nearly dropped my monocle. Well I never. I was at a party in high school at one of my loaded friends house. She had a hot tub which a few of us noticed was being seriously underutilized. My friend's widely despised redneck girlfriend got in first and after I got a fresh beer, I stripped down to my boxes and made my way across the enormous back deck to the flush set hot tub. As I stepped in, my foot slipped on the smooth fiberglass seat and my foot shot out to my side, right between redneck girl's legs. I actually felt my big toe penetrate her vag as I fell into the water. I managed to keep my beer level and above water. As soon as I got my head back above water, she screamed. Markuta I didn't stop laughing for a very long time and still yell that sometimes when I see that friend. I think I redeemed my drunken clumsiness by her. Saving my fresh beer and be eliciting such a ridiculous reaction. TL. DR. I slipped getting into a hot tub. Fell in said hot tub. Kicked my friend GF in the vag. Who screamed Markuta. Managed to hold on to my full beer. Well. That's one way to lose your virginity. Watched a girl puke mid beer pong throw all over the table then scream puke and rally we all cheered. She was one of the last ones up. I watched a guy puke into his almost empty beer glass, 
Then he looked around to see if anyone noticed and continued to party. At a bar in Liverpool, UK I was talking to my girlfriend at the foot of some stairs. Suddenly a guy fell forward down the stairs right between us, rolled onto his feet and walked away without missing a freaking beat. The best part was he was wearing a fur coat, sunglasses and a hat, carrying a drink and had a cigarette in his mouth. As he walked away his drink was unspilt and his cigarette remained firmly in his mouth. His hat and glasses were similarly undisturbed, must have been some kind of party ninja pimp. Wrong thread, that is the exact opposite of a party foul. Beat a bunch of cocky dudes at beer pong with a hot girl as my partner, proceeded to lift her up, with her straddling my waist, and gyrated, quite obscenely, in triumph over the table. I was quite drunk so I dropped her and the cup's beer table tarp went flying. You win sir, for a story both funny and non-gross. A girl pooping her pants at the bar. I saw a girl, in a mini skirt, crap herself as she was being escorted out of a bar by two bouncers. I can only assume she was wearing a thong because what fell out has been affectionately referred to as the split log by the guys I was with. My friend, when drunk, has a teensy bit of a vomit problem. He was angry and paranoid one night and started using his puke as a projectile to ward off people chasing him from behind. The same night, I was helping him relieve himself of vomit in the carpeted hallway of my dorm. A young gentleman shook his head as he passed by, saying that's just sick and continuing on to pee in the trash can opposite of us. I like my school. My friend had an old Prince Albert scar that he shot bottle rockets out of when he got drunk. One party he was in the kitchen and shot a bottle rocket out of his junk and it flew right through the living room. It hit my other friend right in the forehead and exploded just as he opened the front door to enter the party. He got a cut on his forehead and was freaked out pee until we explained. And then he almost died laughing. We sure were young and dumb. LT. DR. Friend shot a bottle rocked out of his dong and accidentally hit my other friend in the face with it. Sister came home from a hard night of partying and apparently had taken 4 consecutive shots of wild turkey 101 as she was leaving. Minutes later my brother comes bounding out of her bedroom saying, you've got to see this dude. We go into her bathroom to find her passed out in the fetal position, one foot from her toilet, with her skirt, but not panties, pulled halfway down to her knees, a large, firm turd halfway protruding from her underpants. Resting gently on the inside of her thigh. We then call her ex-boyfriend to come clean up Mrs. Poopy. He comes over, cleans her up and put her to bed. At which point she begins to vomit all over herself and her white sheets. Creating a pink vomit river. Leading to the edge of her bed resulting in a lovely vomit waterfall. I put her bucket under the waterfall and went to sleep. A large, firm turd halfway protruding from her underpants. Resting gently on the inside of her thigh. That was beautifully descriptive. We were at a 21st birthday of this girl we knew. Things got a little out of hand and hot dogs started getting thrown. One hit me in the head so I picked it up and proceeded to carry it to the kitchen. I opened up their refrigerator and found a 3 stroke 4th full gallon of milk. I opened it up and dropped the raw hot dog into the milk jug. I laughed so hard when I saw it drop from my hand into the opaque container. She called me a week later pee as heck. She found it because it submarined into her cereal bowl. She had been using that milk for a week before that horrible day. My college roommate, he knew how to party. A few of his gems. Got drunk as a skunk at the apartment with a bunch of friends. Me and those friends went on a beer run. Left him alone. When we got back, the cat litter was filled to the brim with urine. He said holy crap you just missed it that frickin' cat pee a lake while he was choking back laughter. He was drunk darling in a very destructive manner one particular night. He had my phone, and was calling people like my parents, bosses, ex-girlfriends. It was bad news. I was with some girl in my room and had no idea what was happening. But one of my buddies was on it, he took the phone and hid it in the freezer. Well... My roommate didn't give up and started looking until he found it, maybe an hour later. I was back out in the living room at this point, when we heard a bit of a pop, along with a bunch of other scary noises. Went into the kitchen and the microwave was on fire. He found the phone, noticed it was cold, and decided to heat it up, in the microwave. That was my damned phone. We were at a house party another night and he was, as usual, hammered, 
and he was causing damage, and getting to the point where people were worried that he would hurt himself. The host decided he needed a cold shower and some sober time, so he told him that he could drink more after the shower, sending him off to the bathroom. This freaking genius the drunk roommate, locked us out of the bathroom and turned on the shower, thought all was well until the shower was going for a good hour. Someone came to the party and said that the house next door had been TP'd pretty well. When we went outside to see it, we noticed the bathroom window, second story, mind you, was open. The sucker threw 20 rolls of TP out of the window, then jumped out after it, in his underwear, in December, in Michigan. He TP'd the place, then ran off to who the frick knows whereville. We went searching and found him wandering the streets, probably shortly before hypothermia would have set in. He was still fired up and ready to go TP more houses, on a camping trip, again, wasted, right? That's how it always starts. He is yelling beer regularly, and drinking as much as possible. He decides to climb a tree, gets pretty far up it, in the dark, while everyone else is pretty much ignoring him maybe 50 yards away by the campfire. He is climbing and intermittently yelling beer. We hear the following. Crack, crack, cr crack snap crack snap thud. I figured he was likely injured pretty bad at that point, he'd climbed at least 20 feet up, probably more. So, we start heading that way, yelling hey dude, are you okay with the girls clearly distressed, out of the darkness, he bellows out be here, I could write a book about this dude, those are probably the best though. Not sure if he is awesome or stupid. Some guy brought a chicken to a kegger at my apartment while I was in college, we kind of lived out in the boondocks. So it wasn't that unusual to have farm animals running around, but he had this thing on a leash with a special harness and everything. The chicken was almost like a dog, really. It followed that guy around, knew a few basic commands, and actually had a lot of personality. So we were all getting drunker and drunker, playing with this animal and we somehow start dressing it up. I made a little jacket for it out of an old t-shirt. Some guys affixed makeshift shoes to its feet with rubber bands. I think he even had a 70s style chain around his neck. Finally someone put a little fedora on him. And that's how he became our party foul. Well played. Got very drunk and a little stoned in friend's backyard. Saw a light go on in his house so we all got giggles scared and hid behind his above ground pool. I don't know how we did it but somehow all five of us leaned against it just right and it split open and tsunamied all over us. I thought the world was coming to an end. Two weeks ago I spilled a drink on my friend while we were smoking a bowl on my porch. She had to take her pants off to let them dry. Shortly thereafter I lost my virginity. Score one for spilled drinks man. That's not a party foul, that's like a party extra point. My friend and I rented a hotel suite to have a new year's eve party. We were all set to have an awesome night with about 15 people coming over. One of our friends, we will call him John Doe to protect the guilty, called the front desk at 8pm and asked them to give a message to us indicating he wouldn't be able to make it to our party. So the hotel manager calls us and says the following in broken English. Are you ready to party? John Doe can't make it to party. No party allowed in room. We had to cancel and sat in the room in disbelief at how our friend just ruined our party by trying to be thoughtful. Someone stole my only bottle of 2009 Dogfish Head 120 minute IPA from my cooler. This is a highly limited, yearly release beer that costs $10.15 for one little bottle, and I was saving it for that night, my birthday, apparently, they didn't like it, because the next morning I found it open, bit full, on the bathroom counter. I get pee when I find open, full bottles of anything the next morning, I can't even imagine how you felt. Ever heard of a flaming doctor? Pepper, you pour a shot with amaretto and everclear, light it on fire, drop it in a cause light, and down the whole thing at once. It does taste like Dr. Pepper and is a great way to get smashed. Anyway, I saw a guy spill the shot, after he lit it, on the tile floor of the kitchen. The freaking tile floor was on fire, that and he spilled alcohol. Serious party foul. Went to a rave some time in the late 90s. I think somebody thought pulling the fire alarm would result in sprinklers dousing the whole party. Nope. Fire marshal came and by and evacuated the building to inspect everything. Buzzkill. 
My buddy and I were doing some drinking at his friend's party, and my buddy, who is rowdy as frick drunk, slaps the host's gf in the cooch, which of course causes the host to try and fight my friend but fortunately they were brass and he was forgiven. However, he then proceeded to knock over the beer pong table mid-game, 20 plus cups of beer on the floor, the entire floor of the living room, hardwood, was covered in about 1 stroke 2 inch of crappy beer. Good times. Then as we were dragging him home he tried to parker everything including people's vehicles on the street. He ran full speed into a pickup truck and was covered in blood the next morning. He also attempted to scale our 5 story dorm. And ran full speed into a glass window that somehow did not break. Well, anything but his face. About a year ago a close friend of mine who cannot handle her booze at all suddenly met the vomit monster. She ran to the toilets to throw up but there was a girl sitting on it. Instead of using the sink or bath my friend stuck her head right between these girls legs and threw up in the toilet while she was sat on it, flailing in horror. My friend claims not to remember a thing and the poor toilet user subsequently became known as the bucket. This guy I lived with for only a couple months chiefed a passed out girl by drawing dongs on her face in sharpie, then her boyfriend, who was just in the next room, went ape crap and wanted to kill him and punched our metal door and dented it. Then we realized the girl with sharpie dongs had disappeared and had left the apartment. There were like 200 units in the building, and so began the search, led by myself and another neutral party. Eventually I found her on a different floor asleep in someone's doorway. We got her down to other neutral party's car, they were DD, and they let this crap go down, where they discovered she pee herself. I got them some water and went to retire, as it was now like 3am. I felt what my roommate did was wrong, so I did not tell him she had peed herself in his bed. He hopped into his bed and noticed it was all wet. He exclaimed, frick. She pee my bed then became quiet, and softly said ah. Frick it and slept in the pee bed. Haha, <laughs> tequila. I was at a New Year's Eve party at a family friend's house a few years ago. My fiance's friend came and brought a date. We'll call him Scott, because that was his name, who she had only just started going out with. Scott was a decent guy and I was having a good time talking to him and introducing him to people at the party. I left him for maybe a half hour and in that time he had finished off 3 stroke 4 of a bottle of Johnny Walker. I know the outcome wouldn't be good so I distanced myself from him for a while. Well word starts going around that there is a guy outside throwing up. A lot. Turns out it was Scott. My fiance and I told her friend that her date needed to be taken care of and apparently he got overly embarrassed and apologetic and told her he was just going to drive himself home. She tried to stop him but he pushed past her and got in his car. And then nothing happened for about an hour. Turns out, the dude passed out in his car before he could even get the keys in the ignition but locked the doors. So my buddy and I start knocking on the windows trying to wake the kid up, but to no avail. We start gathering some tools to break into his car when all of a sudden the engine starts and the dude peels off swerving up the street, blows through a stop sign and drives away. We only saw him once after that. Me and my friends went to Vegas couple years back and hit a strip club. We were all horrendously drunk. One of my friends a small messy guy, who is like Jekyll and Hyde with Aklahal, goes to the common toilets. The store doors are clear glass and frost over when closed. He can't afford a lap dance so heads in and starts fapping. Several people walk past. Eventually a bouncer passes and in shock proceeds to tell my friend how to close the door properly. My friend apologizes profusely and closes the door returning to his fapping session. Five minutes later after several more people pass the bouncer returns to see my friend still couldn't close the door. Mayhem ensued. TL. DR. Caught fapping twice in a Vegas strip club. At a party in high school at a guy's house. This house was due to be knocked down in the near future so obviously crap was going to get messy. It was pretty standard stuff though. People brought paint and flicked it at each other and you wouldn't give a crap if someone spat on the floor or something like that. Good natured. That was until a friend of mine pulled the kitchen cupboard off it hinges. Genuinely by accident. 15 minutes later the whole house was a state. A guy punched through a window and cut the crap out of his hand so someone drunkenly rang an ambulance and the police came with it and closed the whole party down. I think it was the host who called 999 so he sucks but it was the best hour of a party I've ever been to. 
New Year's party two years ago, at a friend's place. We had loads and loads of cheap champagne, which was terrible, but we drank it anyways. Got pretty pee. Now this party is in an apartment on the first floor. We're about to leave for another party, but the host decides he has to take a pee out of his window. Now I missed all of this because I was out getting cigarettes. I was on my way back, turned into the street, and saw one of my mates in front of the front door, head tilted back, and somebody pouring champagne from the first floor into his mouth. Turns out it wasn't champagne, but it was the host, peeing down. Poor fella downstairs was just too wasted to realize it. Had to wait 20 minutes for him to take a shower. Golden rain. Some stay dry and others drink champagne. Golden rain. A party goer will have died of shame. Golden rain. The school gossip will end up here again. Golden rain. The pisser can only wonder where it went. This past Thursday, a friend of mine threw a house party. This one girl and I are flirting back and forth which leads me to losing my virginity. However, I miscalculated how drunk she really was because right when we were done, she walks to the corner of the room and pisses straight on the floor. But there was a bathroom next door. I went to her party at some band's house with a co-worker while I was in college. While I liked this girl, she had a really hard time controlling herself while drinking, especially liquor. We went to quite a few parties together. But this was the last one I went to with her. She got so drunk. She semi passed out on the ground up against a tree. A few friends and I tried. To no avail. To get her up off the ground. She just laughed and kept falling back down. Eyes fluttering. And then she pee herself. Not a little bit of pee. But a massive amount. I felt so bad for her. Eventually she realized what she had done. And let this guy she knew and I get her up and into his car. He subsequently took her home. We still remained friends after that, but I never took her to another party. So my buddy grew a herb plant in college. His landlord found it, so we had to get rid of it. We ground up the whole thing and decided to make it into some cookies. So we melted some butter and added the entire herb plant. We got his little brother to strain it. He poured the butter down the drain and kept the green brown mush that used to be a herb plant that is now entirely empty of THC. I have never been so pee off and laughed so hard at the same time. Buddy of mine drained a whole fifth of Uzo, puked everywhere in the two vehicles that tried to drive him to my place. We saran wrapped him to a couch on my back porch and covered him in laundry. He woke up and knocked the grill off the back porch. After that I let him sleep on the pull out couch bed downstairs. Two hours later he's but freaking naked in my upstairs bathroom trying to unclog a toilet that's not clogged. I freaking flipped crap and yelled at him till he was dressed. He didn't wake up till 4pm the next day. Barely alive. Two hours later he's but freaking. Standing at a crazy busy party waiting in the lineup for the one and only bathroom, I swear I had been waiting at least 35 minutes. I'm almost at the front and the guy in front of me can't wait anymore and mumbles I can't, and just whips his dong out and starts pee in the middle of the line. People are jumping out of the way, girls are screaming and my one and only motivation is that I am not leaving this freaking lineup and nobody is getting in front of me. So finally I get in and my buddy, who has been waiting with me, gets in too. Before we can close the door these hot chicks jump in with us and ask if they can wait inside and me and buddy see no problem with this so I start to pee even though they are clearly watching and commenting on my dong, I was alright with it. My buddy gets up and it's his turn but he gets stage fright and can't pee. The girls go in front of him and the last thing I remember is him begging the next person in line for 5 seconds of privacy. While my a cappella group was on tour in college, some guys accidentally put a hole in the kitchen wall of the house we were staying in. The guys who were around when it happened took turns standing in front of it for around 2 hours until the kitchen cleared out and they could leave. The next morning, some guy comes down the stairs and sees it and goes, Oh man, was that freaking Charlie? Other guy, it is right at head level. Guy 1 lowers his head near the hole. Crap, that's a Charlie sized hole at Charlie head level. Charlie freaking again. This is like the third time. The serendipity of having stayed in the campus rugby house hit us about then. I was at a frat party, so stupid things were expected to happen. There was a cup on a table that people had been putting out their cigarettes in all night. 
One person came by and spilled some beer in it to make sure they were all put out. Some guy comes by and says can't waste good beer then drinks it. Just the beer, not the cigarette butts. At that point, it's no longer good beer. I went to a party once and this guy smoked so much pot that he fell asleep, right on the couch. I like many other discovered the joys of alcohol while in high school. My parents would frequently leave me alone on the weekends. They didn't see me alone as a threat to their house because up until that point all I would do is play wow all weekend long. One Saturday night while my parents were out of town I decided to have a party. My friends and I acquired alcohol with the help of Guatemalan day laborers and hurried over to my house where we began drinking. I invited a good 15-20 people over and we were all having a good time drinking, smoking, shooting the crap. A mutual friend, let's call him Dave, came over to my house to join the party. Everything seemed to be going well until I noticed Dave start drinking a lot. Not just a few shots. He was started chugging Majorska, sub $10 sign handle vodka, the kind of crap you don't frick with. The next thing I know he locks himself in my bathroom and starts acting really freaking weird. He starts shouting things, knocking crap over and causes a commotion. The whole time we're trying to coach him to find the key and unlock the bathroom so we can help. The next thing I know I start feeling really sick. I was an amateur so mixing grass and liquor did me in bad. My last memory is my few friends who are left at the party trying to get him out of the bathroom while I am puking my brains out in my room. I shortly pass out and awake at 7am. I opened my bedroom door to find my bathroom door completely broken down, the frame ruined, my bathroom window smashed, and my bathroom in shambles. There were post-it notes all around the bathroom from my friends who were trying to help that read prey. Call US in the morning, ETC etc. I called my friend and got the whole story. Apparently Dave was on a myriad of medications for his disorders and well you're not supposed to mix some prescription drugs and alcohol. After they got Dave out of the bathroom he instantly started chugging more alcohol and ran across the street to a local park. It was pouring rain. To get Dave to calm down my friends beat the crap out of him, called his parents, and they drove him home. To this day Dave still apologizes for that night. He's a good guy, he got himself under control since then, about 7 years ago, and has quit drinking altogether. I was grounded for 6 months. TLDR. When I was 16 I had a party. My friend mixed various prescription meds and alcohol went berserk. Broke a window, a door, then got the crap beat out of him. I was grounded for 6 months for facilitating the party. The morning after a huge party at my friend's apartment we stopped by to pick up our friend to go bridesmaids dress shopping. While waiting for her to get ready, we see a friend of ours, still awake drinking, at 9am in the morning. He was just sitting in the backyard by himself on a blanket, drinking 5 o'clock vodka and chasing it with, get ready, french onion dip, just shoveling handfuls into his mouth. What did the most drunk person say or do last night at your party? I work at a bar, I tried to take a spoon back from someone who was leaving, but he wouldn't let me have it, he kept insisting that someone had knighted him with it, hope you got home a K spoon night. I got so drunk, that about an hour after the new year I jumped off the balcony, fell to another party and stayed there for a few hours before realizing I don't know anyone. I was the most drunk at my friend's party. Around 11.55 I started freaking out because I didn't have any 2017 glasses. So I ran and got some paper and some scissors to DIY that crap. While sitting on the floor trying to craft some glasses out of paper. The clock strikes 12 and while everyone starts cheering and kissing. I sit on the floor with scissors and papers hysterically crying because I didn't have any night glasses. I was DD and my friend had to puke. So we pulled over and he threw up in the street sidewalk. It's a small town. And we were parked for probably 5-10 minutes. I was looking for cops because I wasn't sure of the legality of him throwing up in the street regarding littering or whatever. And small town cops in Delaware can be sort of dickish. He was finishing up when a cop rolled by. He drove past us and didn't stop. But he turned around and drove past again. He went down the street and around the corner so I assumed we were safe. I drove down the street and shortly after the cop rolls up and pulls us over. I'm sober so I'm not too worried but when he walks up to the car he has a bottle of water in his hand and asks hey do you guys need this looking at my friend slumped over in the back seat. 
We all laugh and thank him and he lets us go on our way. I know he was doing his due diligence making sure I wasn't drunk but he was cool as crap about the whole thing. That's an officer actually doing public work. Had to convince my friend not to jump in the pool because he thought this water is 2016 water. I got a jump before it becomes 2017 water. It wasn't even a pool party. If there are people in a pool, then it's pool party. <laughs> Clapping to the beat of a song. A drunk man from Holland comes up to me and says I have great, powerful claps and we should clap our hands together in the form of a high five. <laughs> my GF started puking. And between outbursts says at least this is all good wine, it doesn't taste so bad coming up. The most optimistic woman in the world. We had a bunch of friends over at our house last night for the new year's celebration. It was starting to wind down and a group of them were having trouble finding a cab home. So one of them passes out on the couch because the wait had been over 2 hours. Finally when a cab is hailed, another friend rushes inside to wake up the girl to get her. My GF and I are saying goodbye to everyone at the door. She groggily stumbles over and begins to say goodbye to my GF. So nice to see you guys. I had a great time. You guys should come over more. Don't worry about the coat. We can meet up tomorrow and figure it all out. Yeah no problem we had a great time too. We'll talk tomorrow. She stands there in a blanket. Yeah. Hope you guys come again. Again? We'll figure out the coats tomorrow. I'm going back to bed right now. And I start to clue in. We live here. You're the one leaving. Oh. So she starts to put on some shoes at the door from the pile. I don't think those are your shoes. Do you remember what you wore here? She looks down and stood trying to fit into small shoes. She then moves to a red cup on the floor and sticks her foot in it. At this point I'm dying laughing. I don't think you wore that either. Oh this is embarrassing I think she walked away with our blanket too. This one is great. Go to love the docile drunks. Ecuadorian student studying abroad in the states. Two bottles of goose. That's geese. A nurse. Guy came in complaining of scrotal pain. Stated he was at home. In his living room. High on coke and quite drunk. Sitting on a bicycle when he slipped and caught his marble purse on the sharp pedal. He felt wetness and assuming it was blood wrapped his manhood in TP and ran to the air. He got back to my room and finally found the courage to check the damage himself. Noticed it was just urine and he had peed his pants. Ran straight back out into the night without another word. Happy New Year Central Ohio. Me and my friend made an addition to 10 jars of Everclear concoctions. Spiked gummy worms. At one point someone had tongs to take out the worms from jars and fed it to one of the girls at the party. He said he felt like a mama bird. In my drunken wisdom, I decided I wanted a mama bird too and proceeded to flap my arms like a bird and squawk. And was rewarded with a delicious worm. Cue about 10 people then squawking and flapping their arms in unison as we were being fed spiked gummy worms by a drunk man with tongs. What a time to be alive. This is the best ha ha ha. I told someone I was done drinking for the night because I'm a pee and he gave me this real emotional speech about never putting myself down. The real MVP. My wife said you can do anything you want to me I won't remember, while hugging the toilet. He kept praising the invention of balloons. I threw the lighter away instead of the firecracker. A guy sat in the corner in tears because he didn't want 2013 to end. There were a few singles at my new year's eve party. They were joking about just all kissing each other when my buddy offers to kiss all of them. When asked how he's going to accomplish it he manages to slur out the words midnight is a whole minute. And I'm a yes. That's my new life motto. I was walking my wasted boyfriend home from the bar we were at. And I told him he wasn't allowed to go to bed until he drank a whole glass of water. He started crying and said why are you punishing me? It was pathetic but hilarious. This lady was much drunker than everyone thought and no one realized until around 12.10am when her husband tried to get her to leave and she grabbed him by the throat and pushed him down some stairs. He got up, dusted himself off, and calmly walked out the front door. She attempted to sober up in the dining room while someone downloaded Uber to her phone so she could get home. I felt bad for the guy, but secretly I was so happy to see he said f this and bounced completely. Problem is he married her. That might have been his breaking point. Meaning crap like that has happened before. 
Good luck to your friend. Friend's friend passed out on the couch still wearing his ski gear, lets out a huge fart waking himself up. He turned to look at his butt simply asking what while looking confused. I think your friend might also be my dog. We had a guy who kept walking up to large groups, pulling up his front facing camera and yelling what's up, snapchat everybody crowded into frame and cheered. He doesn't have snapchat. Towards the end of my own party, I got a bit tipsy and started taking my phone up to people's faces while asking them to pose. Apparently, I was just flashing my phone's torch on their faces for like 2 minutes. I ate a 8 piece family bucket of fried chicken and chugged a few beers. While walking home I vomited in the middle of the sidewalk and basically lay down on top of a bush to recover. Some guy with his lady walked past and when he saw the scene I just heard him say Jesus freak. So I spent New Year's Eve at my girlfriend's place. For a little bit of background, her entire family mostly speaks Spanish. I, on the other hand, speak next to no Spanish. Anyways, at midnight everyone starts hugging each other, and one of her uncles comes over to me and speaks, in very broken and slurred English, that he doesn't know me, and I don't know him, but that's going to change. That he can see that I make my girlfriend happy, and that makes him happy. That he respects me a lot for spending 8 hours with people when I don't understand at all what they're saying. That I'm now a part of his family. Probably not the type of comment you all were looking for, but it was incredibly touching to me. Nah man, that's chill as frick. Good for you. My friend started belting out the theme tune to an old British kids show called Poddington Peas. Then he started crying and said when I was a kid there was an episode about a freaking pea who was too fat to get out of his house. All the other peas tried to help him, but they couldn't get him out. I remember identifying with that pea. That pea was me. He cheered up once we bought him a kebab. I bet the show gave him Pete's tidbit. Wow, this blew up overnight. Thanks for the gold. The most drunk person at my party was my friend's sister who went missing halfway through the party. That is until everyone got a snapchat from her in the bathroom, on the toilet, singing the lyrics to All Star by Smash Mouth. Him. Can I use the food garage? Me. The what? Him. Oh. The oven. Stop telling Emmy what to do. I have never died before. A friend who got kicked out of two clubs and wanted to keep drinking and partying. I mean, I've heard much worse drunk logic. My best friend went over to the keg to get some beer. He pumped the keg and proceeded to spray beer all over his phone which he thought was a cup. I was so stunned I didn't say anything for like 10 seconds and when I did he looked at me like I was stupid and looked back at his phone and threw it across the room. He had to confirm the kill. My friend was hosting a party and got pretty tipsy as the night wore on. He changed his shirt 9 times and took 3 showers, attempted to drink water and spilled it all over himself, then tried to take another shot. Someone stopped him because he was pretty far gone. When I left, he was laying on the floor soaked in water with his headphones on, not plugged into anything. I think we have different definitions of the word tipsy. She called her husband a sad fat dragon. He's really not sad or a dragon. My friend made pasta but forgot that boiling water was hot so he grabbed the noodles out of the water and got third degree burns. We asked our friend how drunk he was. He responded, twice. My friend has a recording of me sulking over a girl years ago and I said, I'm gonna kill myself in half. I found my friend hiding a statue of a mermaid in the top of a toilet. His reason it needed to be back in the ocean. My friend told me he will donate my car to cars for kids if I vomit. How generous of him. I freaking love kids bop, as Fetty Wap was playing on the speakers. On our way home after the party we got pulled over by a cop for taking too wide of a turn. It was raining pretty hard and our DD wasn't super familiar with the area. This is when the drunk butthole laying across the backseat starts panicking and screaming. 
saying he knows we are getting pulled over because he wasn't wearing a seat belt. Long story short cops don't appreciate it when they can tell someone's freaking out in the back of a car they're walking up to. Luckily he was a cool guy, ended up giving our DD a sobriety check and sending us on our way. We apologized for the actions of drunk people but it was pretty late and the cop just seemed glad we had a sober DD. But I don't recommend reaching out through another person's window to try to grab at a cop, even if you're just trying to get out a drunken apology. Sent a dong pic to his longtime good friend instead of who he wanted it to go to. I work in a casino and this random drunk lady poked me in the butthole last night as I walked by. Kinda made me uncomfortable. Last night that person was me. I was falling asleep in front of the toilet but I was shaking because it was so cold in the bathroom. When they tried to move me I shouted this is my spot and started spitting on the floor. I must have the best friends in the world because I would not tolerate that crap. Was on the beach and this guy couldn't find anywhere to hide his bag so he just tossed it into the ocean and yelled those suckers can't steal my beer now. He wasn't wrong. Suckers ain't gonna get his beer. Do you think General Mills was a real general? What is the coolest thing I can take to her party to improve the night? I brought a sheet cake to her party once. I didn't know anyone there and I was a bit nervous. I wrote cake mother sucker on the cake and icing. It was the hit of the party and I met so many people. I was known as cake mother sucker by people for a long time after. Good thing you included the mother. When I was in high school my mom would always give me a pineapple to take to parties with me. I still don't really know why, but they were always a huge hit. My dad once brought one of those infrared laser looking thermometers and had a hottest butt contest. It seemed to be a hit. The winner gets a flu diagnosis. I have a buddy who fills his mirrored medicine cabinet with a hundred glass marbles before every party or get together he has. When someone in the bathroom gets all snoopy, marbles released onto bathroom tile, very loud and bouncy, then we just wait for the beat red face to emerge from bathroom. Good times. Years ago when Dubar was still president, I bought one of those cardboard cutouts of him and took him everywhere. Getting fricked up and taking pictures with the president was awesome and many fun times were had. The party don't start till I walk in. I once made a bunch of super strong jello shots and passed them out at a party. Everyone loved them and I was the coolest girl there. At least I think I was. I could have just been really drunk. We hosted a party once and made jello shots in three varieties. Everclear, vodka and water. We told one guy the order was reversed. He ate 8 or 9 shots of plain jello, 0% alcohol, and was soooo drunk guayas at the end of the night. I have hand cranked blender that is always a hit. People are blown away by the concept and they all want to try. So I put them to work making us delicious margaritas. When I'm traveling I tell them we don't have electricity in a lot of Canada, so lots of appliances are hand powered. They eat it up. I used to have a hand cranked ice crusher, that thing looked sinister, and crushed ice as if it was Satan's will. One of those inflatable remote controlled sharks, a pie, and a box of nerf guns. Whoever shoots down the shark gets the pie. I am bringing the shark swimmer to a friend's birthday party next month. I got one for my dad and it was a huge hit, plus she had a loft and a two story tall ceiling in the living room. It's perfect for a flying shark. Via Todd Glass, if you're going later to a party, stop by McDonald's and grab like 20 cheeseburgers. Everybody's been drinking a while, so when you show up with those delicious grease balls, you'll be a goddamned hero. I won a $50 Burger King gift code in college by calling into the radio. For like 2 or 3 parties, I would just show up with about a dozen items from the dollar menu and pass them around. Did this once. Totally worth it, everyone usually loves it. Go buy a cheap cooler, buy a bunch of fruit, that is strawberries, grapes, pineapple, watermelon, etc. Cut up into decent sized pieces. Go buy about 2 or 326s, quarts of rum, and don't be afraid to mix it up like some Malibu and crap. Pour that crap in the cooler with the fruit. Buy fruit juice, literally any freaking flavor, and add to the mix. Let's sit for about 24 hours prior to party. End result, amazing tasting punch and fruit infused with liquor. Profit. 
a breathalyzer. It's actually quite entertaining. I've played the game where the lowest score has to take a shot. Plus you also know who shouldn't drive. Do not do this if you or your friends are competitive. Anybody showing up with more beer, snacks, or weed is more than welcome by the host. In this hypothetical situation, me, and generally received quite well by the guests too. The ability to mix make an easy but delicious cocktail mixer drink. Girls love girly drinks, and well guys do too, they are just too manly to admit it. Bring some solo cups too, so the guys who are concerned with how it looks for them to be drinking fruity drinks can camouflage their tropical deliciousness. Taco 12 pack. Those commercials don't lie, if you walk into a party at the right time, with a taco 12 pack, you're a freaking hero. A story, I know this sounds weird but my father always told me to never go to a party without some big story to whip out in case the night turns boring. Short glasses in two colors and a checkerboard, you jump it, they drink it, king me, they chug a beer. Note, do not do this with Chinese checkers, you will die. 3 layer taco dip, ingredients, 1 container sour cream, 1 container of cream cheese, or those square packages they come in, 1 package taco seasoning, 1 jar of salsa, I usually buy the jumbo size because, salsa, 1 bag of pre-shredded Tex-Mex cheese, 1 3 bags of tortilla chips, directions, in a pan, bowl, whatever holding implement you want to use, mix the cream cheese, Leave it out at room temperature, sour cream and taco seasoning, spread evenly on bottom, pour the salsa on top of the sour cream cream cheese mix, be generous, people love salsa, spread it evenly, on top of the entire mix, dump a happy helping of shredded cheese, then add some more to ensure the party people will not riot due to lack of cheese, put in fridge and leave for about an hour, just to make it cold and harden a bit, take your tortilla chips, Dip them in the layered dip, put entire thing in your mouth, moan in absolute ecstasy. I bring this dip to every party drinking lazy fest I attend. It wins every time. Why? Because it's amazing. And salsa. People love that crap. <laughs> Duct tape turns a regular night of drinking cans of beer into a great game of wizards with your empties. Tape each new can on top of the one you just finished. Drink from the can on top as your staff gets longer and longer. Haha. <laughs> Tallest staff equals eldest wizard and you can make rules. Dong staff innuendo is an added bonus. Check out dollar stores. Cheap. Staples and Home Depot. Fancy novelty. For duct tape. Lollipops. Someone asks for a cigarette. Whip out a complimentary lollipop. Ask a girl if she needs something to suck on. And moments before the drink hits your face. Gracefully present the lollipop. Somebody tries to pick a fight with you. Neutralize the threat with lollipop diplomacy. Find a set of tiny drums. Lollarock. And if the night sucks, crap. At least you have a lollipop. Giving a guy who is in your face a lollipop is a real double or nothing move. I gotta say, I'm intrigued. Lap swords. My brother had a bunch of mates over for a couple of beers for his birthday at my house a few months back and they were all sitting around in the backyard at night in a circle in plastic lawn chairs, drinking. I walk over and drop three lap swords in the center of the circle of chairs. I'm just going to leave these here, I say. I turn and walk away. I take maybe five steps before I hear the lawn chairs splintering and people battle crease and screaming in pain. Lap swords turn any night into a Lord of the Rings battle scene, guaranteed. If it's late in the night when you arrive, and you know there is enough booze, don't bring more booze. Bring 200 chicken nuggets. A gun. Nobody's moving? A gun will get them moving. DJ won't play your favorite song? A gun will make him play your favorite song. That girl you like won't dance with you? A gun will make her dance with you. Won't dance yourself? A gun will make you dance. Guy at the gun store won't give you a gun. A gun will make him give you a gun. You see that? Substantially better. Bring some courtesy. And by that, I mean stay behind and help people clean up. The host will remember it. And people will remember you for being a stand up guy gal. Since this post is now up to 5000 plus comments with the top ones being mostly meh for my party people. 
I feel obliged to share something I learned from the mom of my friend, which is how they partied back in the who the heck knows when. But I can testify to its efficacy, have used it to turn fun parties into great parties. Without further ado, Liddy's rules for a successful party. 1. Have a few too many people. 2. A little bit too little light. 3. Have the heat on a little bit too much. If it gets cold, people will get tired and might leave. 4. Turn the music up a little bit too loud, so people have to lean in to hear each other. So simple, so elegant in its application. And that night in Tenerife was never the same. I hope Reddit finds it as useful as I have. Try it and report back equals. Frick the heat part, I am a sweaty mother sucker and let me tell you, it is dang embarrassing being drenched in swear when you're at a compact party. What is the craziest thing you've ever witnessed at a party? Floor caved in at an apartment party. The carpet was the only thing holding everyone up. People were falling. Others were trying to climb up the carpet wall that led into the kitchen to try and escape the building. I felt bad for the dude that lived below. Crap was outrageous. What if you were taking a poo and then suddenly the ceiling opened up and all of these drunk people fell on top of you? Land shark was at a party and someone yelled land shark. Out comes a naked dude with a frisbee in his butt crack. Carried butt up by like 4 guys. It was fun running away from him. Watched 2 guys try to jump over a bonfire at the same time from opposite directions. They collided midair and landed in the fire. Alright man. You go left and I'll go right. Saw the passed out girl get dongs drawn on her face in sharpie. Passed out girl was actually dead girl who overdosed. Imagine the marker wouldn't come off. And her parents came into it her corpse and saw like 30 dongs in various shapes, sizes and colors on her face. Last Halloween I watched a drunk guy jump from the third story of an apartment building, then get up and walk away unscathed. He probably died but was too drunk to notice. Guy drinks whole bottle of bourbon at a party I met, passes out on the deck. Two guys come in from an undisclosed location and pop an IV in him and get him up and running again. They casually leave. Two weeks later I found out that they were the neighbors and they had been watching us and thinking of old times partying in the military. They saw this happen and came over to keep the party going. Two weeks, though, no one knew who they were. Good way to meet the neighbors I guess. I'm not sure I let two random guys pop an IV in a drunk dude's arm. Saw a guy drop and shatter an entirely full beer bottle on the floor. I was the only one to saw him. He immediately fled the scene. When people started to surround the broken glass, a random person asked who made this freaking mess. The guy reappeared and said, I bet some freaking chode and he started cleaning it up. Well played guy. He cleaned it up. Respect. I was kinda pee, but my friend invited me to a swingers party without telling me what was going on. I once saw a guy demand to be literally tortured, was at a crap show of a house party once in college when I overheard a very drunk guy say PSSHHHH waterboarding isn't even that bad, I don't get what the big deal is, his equally crap faced roommates got into an argument with him about how awful waterboarding is, but he insisted that it wasn't that bad, one thing led to another and the guy ended up demanding that his roommates waterboard him to prove his point, his friends did not like the idea at all. But this guy was relentlessly insisting that he could handle it. After much drunken convincing they held him down under the faucet with a shirt over his face and waterboarded the shut out of him. He spurted and struggled against their grip but they held him there for something like 12 seconds. Which felt like a freaking eternity watching this crap go down. Afterwards they pulled him up and waited for his reaction. After coughing for a while he looked up at them and said, Frick dude, that freaking sucked. Who would have thought that little torture would be unpleasant? What the crap Lana. Found a dead person in my lawn the morning after. That was crazy. Drank too much and mixed it with whatever pills. Went to wake him up. But he was dead. I watched a marriage fall apart at a family reunion I was at. My aunt and uncle invited their neighbors over and we started off classy but then popped out the liquor. That's when a couple, non-relatives, 
who seemed quite normal and happy at the beginning of the night, began to open up about the marital problems to other people quite loudly. At some point this couple discovered what each other had been saying about the other. The f- 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 while he was gone, the wife tried to jump my underage cousin screaming about how much she wanted him to frick her in the bathroom, then locks herself in the bathroom. My aunt calls the husband to come and collect his wife and they end up having sex in the bathroom. Very interesting night. Sounds like a pretty good marriage actually. Party at a cabin in the woods in Quebec. The DJ is great. The dance floor is lively. There's a good mix of people you know and people you don't. The lights are dim and there's good energy. Suddenly, there's naked guys on the dance floor. A cheer goes up and some other ambitious folks, suddenly realizing the party could go full naked, take their cue and doff their garments. The dance floor loses a bit of momentum, but the naked people are putting out some great energy so nobody minds. Then the whispers start. Nobody knows who they are. The naked guys. They don't speak English, which is normal, because it's Quebec. But they don't sound like they're speaking French either, and nobody knows who they are. We head out to the porch, and there's three sets of ski tracks that led from the forest to the cabin. Three sets of skis, and no context. Eventually it turns out that they were three Norwegian tourists, staying at the local hostel, out for a naked ski through the countryside at 1 in the morning when they heard a party going on, and invited themselves in. The editor of the local paper was there. They made front page. Gota loves Scandinavians. Been to two naked parties, dongs and tea flopping everywhere. It takes an hour or so and then people realize it's just a normal party and no orgy going on so you just chill and try to get as drunk as you can. On Halloween I watched a guy dressed as Jesus standing on top of a frat house drinking boxed wine claiming it was water a few minutes ago. An hour later I saw the same Jesus being arrested for public indecency. I saw the guy eat frozen pizza rolls. Not the craziest thing that has ever happened, but for some reason I'm still not over it. Some guy at a college party took a fish out of the host's aquarium and put it on the grill to cook it alongside the hamburgers and hot dogs. Needless to say, the host was mortified as this fish was their special pet. Seriously though, frick that guy. It's one thing to be in butthole and mess up someone else's belongings. It's another thing to kill their pets, even if it's a fish. I was at a party that my friend had invited me to. It was in a hotel room at a pop culture convention so most everyone in the hotel was partying to some extent. I mostly just sat awkwardly in the corner while everyone did shots out of a guy's butt. All he was wearing was a jock strap. At some point someone bursts into our room. The door was slightly ajar and asks if anyone is a doctor. The bus shots guy sits up, sending the shot glasses flying and yells I'm an EMT and runs out of the room. He relocated the girl's shoulder and waited with her until the ambulance came. My friend kicked a girl in her chest right off the patio 300 style. My manager, while showing me around the store the first day, wanted to show me that the front doors could be pushed open by kicking it 300 style. My friend spilled an entire fifth of crappy whiskey. How to clean it up you ask? A mop. But wait, you can't just waste the booze. Whiskey mop water. Why not just wring it out into our mouth someone asks? Or dares. I can't remember. But that's what happened. Dirty butt mop water mixed with crap whiskey being chugged and sipped straight from the mop itself as well as the bucket. Being sober and witnessing this was really a WTF moment. Haha <laughs> WTF. That's vile. I saw someone stumble past the football table at a party on Halloween. I made a joke that someone got drunk too early. Then I noticed the blood. Three other people got stabbed. Guy caught some people in his room stealing crap. They stabbed him a couple times, then stabbed their way out. Hotel party. 20 some 20 somethings crammed into a motel 6 room drinking and smoking. At a certain point in the night the guy who actually bought the room, who I didn't know, said I'm gonna go to bed but I'm just gonna sleep in my van so y'all can keep partying. A cheer goes up he leaves night continues and fades into black. I wake up the next morning on the floor of this hotel room with no one else there, totally alone, 
I stumble out of the room into the parking lot and parked right outside the door is a cop car and ambulance and some small commotion but I leave unnoticed. I walked to a nearby dinner and saw some kids from last night who informed me that the guy whose room it was went back to his van but not to sleep but to smoke em and he had overdosed and died during the night. The little crew that had formed during that time going to parties like that. This was in NorCal. Disbanded after that. Our youth. I was at a party, standing at the basement door while a small group of people passed a joint. The entrance to the door was slightly below ground level, so we were standing in a depressed concrete area in front of the door with the ground above at about waist height. In front of us, at our level, was an old lawn mower, the kind you would pull the cord and curse at while it refuses to start. Puff, puff, pass in the quiet of the night when suddenly a loud thud and a body from above lands horizontally, back first across the lawn mower, having fallen from the balcony above. His arms quickly grab his chest as one might be expected to do during a traumatic chaotic dissection. There is a sigh like gurgling noise from him and then nothing. He is not moving and we are 100% certain he is deceased. I feel like the life force is leaving him as his arms, now awkwardly across his chest, start to slowly unfold, past parallel toward the ground. His right arm has now entered our space. Hand open and limp at the wrist, fingers hanging down and looking very corpse-like. Slowly, eerily, his index finger and thumb begin to move together until the tips are touching. His body language is unmistakable, so we pass him the joint and he takes a long haul. Somehow, he was completely unharmed. Legend. I was at a house party, and the party next door was being hosted by collegeofuckfest.com. We were admiring the ridiculous queue of dudes waiting to get into the party, probably assuming they'd get a frick somebody, when the staircase they were on collapsed. It was like watching a drunk Titanic. Party has been going on for an hour. Bedroom door opens and guy walks out in pajamas with a holster and 9mm pistol. He goes out the back door to talk to Jim his roommate who started the party. Jim is drunk. Turns out the armed man in his pajamas was named Fudge. He was not happy at the noise. Jim and Fudge argued and Fudge drew his pistol and made Jim dance with real bullets. I don't know what happened after that because I ran away. I like to think they lived happily ever after though. One of the most interesting party stories I have would be the time me and my girlfriend at the time had a party at her house. Everything was going fine but people kept showing up throughout the night. She went and passed out and I stayed up to make sure everything was going fine and nothing got stolen or broken. Finally at one point I decide to go to bed even though the party is still going on. We then wake up the next morning expecting to find people passed out in a trashed house but instead found the whole house cleaned and a box of donuts waiting for us. That was the best way to wake up after having a party. After the shrooms hit, I was feeling on the verge of a breakdown freak out. So I went into the chill room and found a spot on the floor. A while later I noticed there was a rat in my lap that I was petting. Strangely, the guy next to me could see it too. Turns out it was the host's pet. Friendly enough for a rat, we chatted for a while before he moved on to a different lap. Domesticated rats are nice, just like bigger mice really. The problem comes when you get wild rats which breed like, well, like freaking rats, and they are gross and skitter about all self-righteous and smug, like they own the goddamn place, and then they eat your uncle Bob while he's napping on the sofa one night. Seen a year of college, a friend of mine had just been drafted to the NFL team in my city, so myself and my roommates had been helping him get acquainted. We threw a pretty big party in our house and invited him. He ended up taking an entire fifth of 100 proof Smirnoff to the head in one continuous swig. He basically ended up bouncing our party, putting many of our guy friends in headlocks, and passing out on the futon in our basement. He made me promise not to let anyone take pictures of him because it would ruin his career. What a pal. This happened when I was college. I was at a party that spanned two apartments on the third floor of three story building. The entire outside walkways were filled with people. At about 1am, the people in the adjacent apt start leaving slamming doors, 
It was the biggest, loudest party I'd ever witnessed at that point. Eventually it gets so crowded upstairs that people begin spilling out into the parking lot. So now the party is taking up the entire top floor of the apartment building and there's probably 100 people in the parking lot as well. I brought a few people I'd been chatting with out onto the porch of one of the apartments with the intention of smoking them out. I'm packing a bowl when this wasted chick who is sitting beside me grabs my face and goes in hard for a kiss. Unbeknownst to me, her boyfriend is standing right inside the sliding glass door and see this happen. He comes out ready to beat my face in. It went from, holy crap this is the coolest thing that has ever happened to me, to oh frick, frick 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 frick, really quick. Thankfully the people I was with stopped him and explained I had no part in initiating our short-lived but intense makeout session. The guy wasn't really hearing it, he wanted to beat my butt. About this time we hear glass breaking down in the parking lot. We look out into the lot and see bottles being flung down from the third story walkways and one of them hits this guy. Clean. Right in the face. He goes down. The bottles continue raining down. I have no idea why they were throwing bottles. Word of this gets to the hosts and they yell. Cops are coming. Everyone needs to get out. I'm pretty sure this was just to get everyone to leave. But it saved my butt. I feel sorry for the guy that got hit in the face with a bottle. He was gone when we got down to the parking lot so I assume he was at least relatively okay. I heard a lady shout Mick. Don't drink raw chicken and turned around to see Mick had grabbed a plate from the fridge with a chicken on it, and he was drinking the bloody red juice out of the plate. Not sure why. TL. DR. Mick drank raw chicken. I once watched a guy in lab coat on Halloween throw a bottle of wine on the ground, yell entropy and run out of the party. I saw a man vomit up an entire, intact, Dorito. End of story. I was at a party once where someone put vodka in the host's rat's water bottle. He died. That's sad. My friend Pete worked on a girl for 2 hours and finally got her upstairs. About 15 minutes later she came running down the stairs screaming. It's in my eye and it burns. Even though her friends helped her wash out her eye, it got all red like she had pink eye. To this day, we call him Texas Pete because he apparently he shoots hot sauce out his dong. CM in the eye sucks. Happened to me once in high school so I had to convince my parents I had pinky. So in my senior year in high school I was attending a friend's party at his mom's house because she was out of town. So my friend had invited some of his more ambunctious friends and they almost immediately busted out the sea and started going to town. Being relatively sheltered I was uncomfortable with being around all that yayo so I just hung with my brother in the other room and smoked a couple bowls. Well some time had passed and I hear yelling from out front and decide to go check it out. As I walk to the front door it flies open and this guy runs in holding his gooch screaming he got me. He got me and as he hops past me he moves his hand and his pants are soaked in blood. Needless to say I was speechless and being stoned I was a bit nervous. But alas my curiosity got the better of me and I walked out front to see what was going on. Out in the street I see two figures fighting with broken bottles and one guy laid out unconscious in the street. I watch this in amazement for a few moments and then a car comes screeching around the corner and freaking rams into one of the guys fighting in the street. Causing the guy to roll over the hood and get tossed a couple feet before the car speeds off. At this point I am like frick this crap and I just bounced with my brother without asking questions. I come to find out later that there were some random tweakers spinning underneath one of the coke heads trucks at the party and someone called them out. Being tweaked out the tweakers tried to fight the coke head and all his like 6 friends at the party. Who were also yacked out. Some bottles got brought out and smashed and one guy got stabbed in the gooch. After that one of the coked out guys ran at his car and decided he was going to run the tweakers over, which he did. Needless to say I haven't hung out with those people since that party. I just learned a ton of new words. I had a party at my college house once where I ended up passing out early. The next morning I walked downstairs to find friends sleeping all over the floor, and panties. Dozens of panties. Hanging from my ceiling fan, displayed on the bookshelf, in my freezer. They all had ridiculous print on them, like my, picture of a cat, love Steve's, picture of a rooster. There was even one hanging from the sconces outside. The way it was described to me, a friend showed up to the party who happened to be working a random factory job, making panties. He brought a backpack full of them, 
and when the time was right he busted that crap open like a pinata. Maybe not the wildest party experience, but one of the most bizarre. That is the least interesting outcome to that story possible. I was at a party when I was about 19 or 20, 4 long years ago and lots of booze later I'm not really sure when it was. It was a house party and there was a list of rules up. One of the rules was that if you grabbed a spit you had to drink it. So as the party progresses one guy was well ahead of everyone else to the point that he can no longer stand. Well while he is sitting he throws in a dip and continues drinking. For a drunk he had great skills in distinguishing between the beer he was drinking and the empty he was spitting into even while not looking and talking to people. Well a couple of buttholes are watching and think it'll be funny to switch his spitter spot and his drinking spot. So he puts his beer down and starts talking. And one of the guys quickly changes the bottles around. Well the guy turns back to grab his beer and the butthole starts screaming that he grabbed a spitter. The party went freaking silent. The drunk looked at the freaking bottle with a look of bewilderment. The host of the party walked up and said sorry man rules are rules. Then the drunk yells frick it and started to put the spitter to his lips. At that point I was about to puke just watching it even though I dip. But just as he gets the bottle to his lip the host grabs it from him and turns to the butthole. And says I saw you change the bottles. So you get to drink it. At that point the butthole says frick that and tries to leave. The host yelled at a few guys to stop him from leaving and then forced him to drink it. Quickest form of karma I've ever seen. Also posting from my phone so sorry for any frick ups. If your party has a rule list that includes the word spitter, you might be a redneck. A girl was super drunk and she pulled down her pants and started swinging back and forth while pooping. Everyone called her party pooper forever. Roll two natural twenties back to back. It was crazy time to be alive. My friend. He likes to attend house parties. Often with the sole purpose of getting drunk and stealing at least one of the host's spoons. He is quite the collection. I found out about this after a mutual friend ranted on Facebook about someone stealing their spoons at their party. And he chuckled and told me it was him. A buddy of the host called early on. About 8pm. There was an accident at work and the host needs to help him now. So dude shows up, acting a little worried but otherwise normal. I don't hear what he says to the host, but he rolls up his sleeve, and there's a 2 inch square flap of skin that's been ripped up from the muscle and folded in. Some piece of equipment cracked and a huge chunk of something clipped him. Thing is he's a huge pothead and if he files a workers comp claim, they'll have him tested and he'll be fired. Luckily, one of the guests happens to be, swear to god, a horse surgeon. He drove home and got his mobile kit. The entire time the skin was being removed from underneath the wound, the entire time the wound was being cleaned with alcohol, the entire time the wound was being stitched up, this guy didn't even flinch. Then he grabbed a water, took a massive bong hit, and passed out in his car. I've done some tough guy crap in my time out of absolute necessity, but at that moment I realized I'm much closer to a fluffy little fat girl than a tough guy. I was afraid you were going to say the horse surgeon came back, decided the wound was too severe, and euthanized the dude. Probably the girl who I was discussing wine enemas with, yes I am gross, who didn't believe that that could possibly work. Unprompted she decided to test it by dipping a tampon in vodka and inserting it into herself. It worked, and I had to take her to the hospital because goddammit don't apply 100 proof alcohol directly to a mucous membrane people. Got drunk at a party in Berlin. Don't remember how but ended up at a party in Prague. Got drunk at one country and woke up in another. Good times. Reddit. What's your party trick? I can throw cards really fast and really hard. I'm pretty decent with my aim also, so I can knock down a game of Jenga from across the room. I'm Gambit. So I can knock down a game of Jenga from across the room. You should learn to knock a piece out without knocking down the Jenga. That would be freaking incredible. Homeless guy got a buck off me with this one. Homeless guy, I bet you a buck that I can knock down this pole. Homeless guy points to telephone pole. Me will take that bet. Homeless guy then starts to knock with his knuckles all the way down the pole. I was completely okay with giving him my dollar after that. I have a tungsten wedding band that won't scratch a dent. So I open people's beer bottles with it. I recently attended a wedding and taught the groom I just met that trick. 
He then told me it was the best piece of advice he had received all day. The bride was not amused. One of my buddies learned to open bottles by prying off the cap with his teeth. It was pretty cool until he tried it one day and managed to remove one of his molars along with the bottle cap. I can whip up an awesome caricature in about 2 minutes. When I lived in the dormitories, Air Force everyone had a whiteboard on their door. We'd get crap faced and someone would always conjure up a dry erase marker for me to draw on people's doors. One weekend I did about 30 in a row. There were about 15 people following me from door to door, howling with laughter as I drew the face of the person who lived in each room. Good times. I can juggle. Juggling is only impressive if no one thinks you can do it. As soon as you force it into conversation, it seems really lame. Oh, see how I have three apples here? Wouldn't it be a shame if I were to throw them all in the air at the same time look at me? But when you're holding two things and somebody tosses you another and you just bust out some juggling for like 5 seconds, it's pretty sweet. I'm pretty sure it works the same for people who play the guitar. If they kind of bring a guitar or just pick one up and start playing it isn't that impressive. If you throw a guitar at someone's face though and they start juggling it and then break into song, it's the best ever. I can dislocate my right shoulder. Thanks to this I can put my arm behind my head, reach down under my chin from the left side and up around to pull out my right contact. Also, I can pop it in and out. It makes a sound very similar to cracking your knuckles, but a lot louder. Usually get a few people to say gross. Perfect pitch. Play a note on the piano any instrument. Really, I'll name it. Play up to 4-5 together. I'll name them with high accuracy. After that it gets a bit harder. When I was in high school, there was this weirdo at a college party I had gone to that night. His party trick was sticking nails up his nose, and explained to me that it was possible because the nasal cavity is so deep. He taught me how. I can still get a long nail about 6 inches up my nose. Naturally, I made out with him to show my gratitude. Dude, when I was little during an operation for getting a tonsil out of my throat through my nose, they accidentally cut my nose right at the part where it connects to my face so now it's grown to be a little wider I can stick my whole finger up my nose. Mother. Fricking. Chicken McNuggets. I don't have much talents to show off. But I always notice college kids bring booze to parties all the time and not often food. McNuggets make good party finger food and you can get like 50 for 15 bucks. Instant friends maker. This is genius and the only remotely useful tip I've found on here. I can unhook bras through a girl's clothes in a fluid single handed move. Although I'm not ambidextrous, I can do this with my left and my right hand. The beautiful part is, if girls have never seen you do this, they immediately challenge you. Fun for all. My husband does this to me still, repeatedly. Pro tip, when you're married to the girl, it loses all its charm no matter how impressive it is. Shove a needle down the middle of a cigarette. Don't ash. Act like you don't see a thing as your cigarette turns to ash but doesn't drop. This sounds safe. Open a bottle of isopropyl, rubbing, alcohol, stick my whole thumb in the bottle opening, splash invert the bottle so the thumb is soaking wet, then light my thumb on fire. For about 20 seconds, the evaporation of the alcohol cools the thumb more than the fire heats it, then it starts getting warmer. By this time, everyone at the party is already impressed annoyed as much as they're going to be, so I just flick my hand to put out the remaining flame before it burns me. I really want to try this but it seems like the 4chan grow your own crystals crap all over again and I don't want to burn my thumb off. So this is a great bar riddle I used to perform when I was a bartender. You need a glass plate with water on it, a wine glass, an olive, and a book of matches. Place the wine glass upside down on the plate of water and you'll see that there is no water on the inside of the glass. The riddle is to get all of the water on the inside of the glass. All you can use is the olive and a book of matches. What you do is stick a match in the olive and put it on the plate of water. The light the match and put the glass on top. A vacuum will be created from the match burning up the oxygen under the glass all the water will be sucked under. Have fun. With the aid of another drunk on the premises, I can smoke a whole pack of American spirits in a half hour. Throw up, get pee like it's the cigarette's fault and swear I'm going to quit smoking. 
I did this last weekend. Special guest star for Loco. This is totally dumb, but I have this pink glow in the dark nail polish. It looks bubblegum pink in the daylight, but in the dark it glows green. I like to paint my nails with it when I go to a party, and when everyone is properly drunk, I show people my glowing nails and their poor intoxicated minds are blown. I can open a beer bottle with anything. Best one so far a piece of paper. My old manager taught me how to take the end of a champagne bottle off with a knife. I always liked that one. Beer seems more convenient, as I seldom find myself with a rogue bottle of champagne. I've done the I can't tie a cherry stem in and not using my tongue trick. But here's how I do it. Cheat on the sly. Step 1. Tie a cherry stem into numerous knots. Keep in mouth. Step 2. Make a flip comment about how you used to be able to tie a knot in a cherry stem using just your tongue. Step 3. Inevitably, someone will want to see, so get the, untied, stem from them. Step 4. Put the supplied stem in mouth. Take a few seconds and act like you're doing something. Step 5. Pull the dual knotted stem out and show them, keeping the other stem in your mouth. Step 6. Enjoy watching them think you're tongue acrobat. I can feel a person's arms and tell you what instruments they play, up to 9, how often they play, and which one is their favorite, and I get to fondle arms while I do it. I can tell what instrument you play by feeling your breasts. I used to rip beer cans in half because I thought it asserted my alpha male status and was a guarantee in with the ladies until one fateful night a jagged aluminum edge of a bud select reclaimed its vengeance on all of its fallen mangled brethren, and nearly sheared my finger clean off my hand. Blood was spilt, showering upon the once virgin carpeted floors, and I vowed on that day to never again take advantage of the feigned frailty of aluminum beer cans, and to live once again in harmony with them. Utilizing them only for their intended purpose of liquid consumption. I can do that trick where someone draws a random card, writes the card number and suit on a little piece of paper, then lights that paper on fire, then I rub the ashes on my arm and the card number and suit appears. I will expose how it's done. 1. Have a card in mind. Hearts are best because they are the easiest to draw. That'll be important later. Always have that card at the top your deck or if you are good enough, get it to the top while shuffling a deck at someone else's house. Learn how to do a force it's a simple trick and the one I use is after shuffling I sit the deck of cards on the table and ask the person to split the deck, making two piles. On of the piles you know what the top card is. I then say some crap about getting ready and meditating. Then I take the pile of cards that they separated out and put it on top of the pile courseways, making a sign to mark where they split it. But really it's the top card that you know and not the middle where they split it. People will not notice this because you momentarily distracted them by meditating. After marking the middle of the pile, make another big deal about concentrating on what card it is. Then ask them to take that card from the middle and write down the suit and card number then fold up the paper in an ashtray and light it on fire. 2. Before all this, go to the bathroom. While you're in the bathroom use either a corner of a wet bar of soap, small amount of Vaseline on a tip or some clear chapstick to draw the card on your arm. This will leave a bit of a film on your arm. Now you know why hearts are the best cards for this trick. If you use Vaseline, make sure you use a very very small amount as it tends to smear. 3. After the paper stops burning, rub the ash on your arm. The ash will stick to the soap Vaseline chapstick and people will be amazed. I predict you're all about to be blackballed from the magician's alliance just like gob. 1. You need an empty beer bottle and any dollar bill or whatever paper currency your country uses. Put the bill on a table and balance the empty beer bottle upside down on top of it. Tell people you can keep the money if you can get it out from under the bottle. But, the bottle has to remain upside down on the table and you can't not touch the bottle. Almost everyone will try yank the bill out really fast, like the tablecloth trick. This should fail 95% of the time. How you do it is, you slowly roll the bill, and you'll be able to nudge the bottle off the bill, bit by bit while it remains upside down. 2. Requires 2 empty beer bottles and paper currency. Put a beer bottle on a table normally, then put the money on that, but don't put it right in the center. 
Add 3 stroke 4 of the bill hanging off the left. Then put the second bottle on top of that. This one upside down. You tell the person that they can keep the money if they can get the note out without touching the bottles. And keep the bottles balanced how they are. How you do it is. Assuming you're right handed. Take the fingertips of your left hand and grab the very edge of the bill so as to straighten it. Careful. Then moisten your right index finger. Suck it for a couple of seconds. Then hit down on the note with the moistened finger like a hammer. And it should come right through without moving the bottles. 3. The 5 questions game. Tell someone that you're going to give them 5 questions. And all they have to do is get them all wrong. To make sure they understand, give them a simple example. Like, for example, if I say what year is it, you say 1920 or something. So proceed with 3 extremely simple ones. Even use the example again if you want. The 3 I go with are 1. What year is it 2? What is your name 3? What city are we in? Then you get to the 4th question. Here, you ask how many questions was that so far, but say it in an over the top way, so that the person will think that this is where you are trying to trick them. They will think they are being clever and say 20 or whatever. Here you have to do some good acting. Act defeated and be like nicely done. Good job. Seriously, have you played this before no got you on the last question. 4. Simple as frick. Put a glass upside down on a table and tell the person to balance some nearby object. A lighter, an orange, whatever on the top of the glass. They ll put it on the glass, and think they've won. Then you say that's the bottom. Stupid hand magic. I pinched my thumb and index finger together to make a circle on both hands. Put my hands behind my head come back out and the rings are together. I ask you to blow on them and they magically come apart. Stuff like that. Ladies, contain your orgasms. I've lit my titties on fire for a couple birthdays and bachelor parties. All you need is a pack of matches, a good deal of saliva, and a whole bunch of bravery. It's good fun, the guys can blow out my nipples like little candles. I want a party with you. I have push-up contests with my boyfriend's army buddies. It started when we were all pretty drunk and for some reason someone challenged me. I ran to the bathroom before the contest and my boyfriend tried to talk him out of it. I smoked him. I am 5 feet tall, 120 pounds and he didn't know I was a personal trainer. Side crow pose. It's a yoga thing. Oh and cartwheels. Unfortunately I wear dresses a lot at parties. But by the end of the night, WHO cares WHO sees my underwear am I right? Start telling people you can do magic tricks, but you don't really like to perform them. Get an attractive girl interested. Cave in and offer to do a trick. Tell her you will close your eyes and she has to write her number on a folded piece of paper and place it in your hand. When she does, open your eyes, say thanks, and walk away. Find her later, at the party, of course, and give her the number back. Apologize. Say it was for the joke. Get a real number. Lucky numbers. 17, 28, 18, 53, 73, 14. This is a fortune cookie. I've always liked the fireball. Hold your hand in a loose fist, above your thumb and point to fill your fist cavity with lighter gas, a normal big. Don't spark it just hold down the button thing. After a few seconds light the entry to the fist cavity and you to cam throw around a fireball. I can't tell if this actually works or I'm going to set my hand on fire. This one is always fun. Here's how it works. You ask some person to count like this. 5, 55, 555, 5555, 55555. 555,555, but to keep going until you tell them to stop, let them count, they're probably going to screw it up, up to about 5,555,555, then tell them, stop, don't think, name a vegetable, prior to this, you've already written down carrot on a piece of paper while they watch, don't let them see what you're writing, duh, most of the time, they'll say carrot, you casually flip over the paper and wink. Pro tip, this works best on people of normal intelligence. Oh, and if they don't say carrot, you look impressed and say, interesting. Most people of average intelligence say carrot. Only 10% of the people say what to said. 
Pro tip. This works best on people of very low intelligence who say tomato. Other fun trick. Spell silk. S-I-L-K. What do cows drink? Milk. Nope. Water. It's even more fun when they spell it out. That's some R4 wards from grandma level crap right there. This is also a really easy way to get 10 bucks. 1. Get 2 cups full of any liquid. 2 pieces of paper. Crush both pieces paper into a ball, and the money you're betting. 2. Tell them. They can have the money if they copy exactly everything you do. 3. You start with the paper ball on one side. Let's just say the right side of both people. You move it to the left. They follow. You move it back to the right. They follow. Then you take a sip out of the drink, but you don't swallow. Wait a second. Look at them. Spit the drink back into the cup. 4. 5. Profit. Crippling social anxiety and crying in the corner really gets the crowd going. Or reciting pi to 15 decimal places. I'm a pretty cool guy. Five years of playing guitar has taught me the ever popular party trick. Douchebag. I don't like to whip it out too often. It cheapens it. I can solve a Rubik's Cube. It's hilarious when people try to mix it up so much that they think you'll never be able to solve it. I can tell what a woman ate for lunch by the taste of her farts. By the end of the party, I have a lot of drunk women farting on me and I get to taste all their sweet sweet farts. I can lick my elbow, and, in advance party trick mode, both at the same time. My favorite is when someone tells me it's impossible so I do it and then the entire party spends the next 5 minutes trying to lick their elbows. Write down the Roman numeral 49 somewhere. 9. Bet people that you can turn that number into a 6 in one stroke. Feed on the disbelief. Add in an S and blow everyone's minds. What's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen at a party? NSW. There was this big girl college football player playing beer pong and getting pretty drunk. After missing a throw, he was still whining the game mind you. He turned around, let out this primal yell, and punched a hole clean through the wall. He felt so bad that he had someone drive him to Home Depot, bought spackle and paint, and spent the next couple hours drunkenly repairing the fist hole with the demeanor of a sad puppy with its tail tucked between its legs. So this guy has mad integrity. He can come to any party of mine. This party had got really out of control. People were drawing all over the walls with markers. The host was crying act. But the funniest thing I saw was when I walked by the kitchen. There were about 6 people gathered around the microwave, drumming their hands on the counter and keeping a low chant of ooh and then there was a loud pop. Everybody cheered and then they opened the microwave and put more eggs in. I know someone who got seriously injured and had to wear a pirate patch for ages due to a similar incident. Kids don't try this at home. Group of us, ages 17-19, around a bonfire drinking beers and girls start asking dudes truth or dare questions. Things start heating up and sexual tension is building up until my buddy asks this drunk girl who chose truth what her craziest master bashing story was. She tells us that midway through finger banging herself she let her German shepherd mount her and she came. Killed the mood that was set because she started bawling when one of the guys called her a dog sucker and the rest of the girls tried to take care of her. My friend had a hernia that protruded into his nutsack. So no crap. His nutsack was between the size of a baseball and softball. He pulled that crap out in the middle of a party and the room went silent. Had a fraternity brother who had something similar. He was a soccer goalie and I guess a few years prior he took a kick to the nuts that ruptured the surrounding tissue of one of his nuts. He would happily show anyone who asked. Since the membrane was ruptured I guess a bunch of fluid filled his nut. It was the size of a russet potato. His nickname was Spud. It was my father's 25 plus years with his co-workers party in our backyard. One guy had a motorcycle accident a year prior and this was his first party out of his bed he was in for 12 months. Promptly chugged along with everyone until he's having such a good time and obviously buzzed that he stands up off his wheel. Chirp 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 He had forgotten he was handicapped among his buddies. Kinda sweet, honestly. 
A girl was giving butt naked lap dances for money. She was probably a stripper. She was straddling my friend and I saw some period blood dropping on his chest. We threw some singles at her so she would keep going because that's what friends are for. That sounds like a bloody good lap dance. A girl crapping her pants. Nobody knew her really. She was just there, unleashing the dark bomb and left crying. Never saw her again. What a party pooper. Watched a midget do a keg stand in college. The ridiculous part was when he landed back on his feet. His eyes immediate rolled to the back of his head and he passed out. He fell backwards like a board and smacked his head on the floor. He looked dead for a few seconds and several people circled around him. When he finally opened his eyes everyone yelled and cheered. Seemed like a movie. Had a midget hanging from the chandelier in my dining room at one of our weirder parties when I was in my early 20s. One of my college roommates brought his 16 year old younger brother up to school for a weekend of partying. Not the most responsible decision, but hey, college. Anyways we take him to a frat party and about an hour in, I walk in on him making out with a girl in the garage as if he did it for a living. He was out there for about 30 minutes and comes back in alone and joins us. He then finds this other girl and says verbatim. So, I just made out with this girl for 30 minutes. Think you can beat that? They then walked away back to the garage. Most impressive move and most ridiculous working pickup line I've seen pulled off by anyone. Two drunk girls just beating the crap out of this one jacked dude. The story afterwards was that he was cheating on both of them at the same time and they met at the party when it all came out. House party in college. In the middle of nowhere. We are talking like 45 minutes into the mountain. One lane roads. Uphill. Super sketchy. We get there and there are over 200 people. Big house. Second story deck. DJ was rocking out. They are charging $3 bucks a drink. Merry Olay time. My buddy grabs me midway into the party to take me on the deck to party. That's where the DJ and facing was. I go out and starting shaking my groove thang and realize the deck is moving up and down with the music. I run back inside and tell my friends not to go on that deck. No more than 2 minutes after I say that. Screaming. Crunching. Crying. Breaking glass. I look at the deck and just see people arms go up as the deck collapses and falls a story onto two cars. The kid who threw the party got sued, as he rented the house for the weekend. My friend broke his ankle, but no one died I know of. Guy broke a door off its hinges while covered in blood, then casually just walked off with it under his arm, without saying a word. Taking home a souvenir from that crazy party, probably. This girl that was a friend of a friend that nobody else really knew was clearly on something and was pretty out of it. We are all sitting around having a good time, when out of nowhere this girl stands up, walks to the refrigerator, opens the crisp drawer, which had a couple bananas in it, pulls down her pants and proceeds to squat and pee in the crisp. Nobody stopped her when we saw what was going on because I think we were all in shock and couldn't really believe this was actually happening. Other friend that was trying to get with her, tried to calm the situation by grabbing a banana that had just been pee on and peels it and eats it to show there is nothing wrong with them. Later in the night that girl gave a blow to a third friend in the backyard. Drunk girl fell down a flight of stairs to the basement at a party, landed face first on a pile of hardwood scraps and gashed her face pretty good, reverted to speaking Spanish, she was visiting from Mexico, and refused the idea of calling an ambulance. She ended up fine the next day from what I heard but looked pretty bruised from the pics I saw. She was drunk in the kitchen and went to lean on the wall, but there was a doorway where she thought the wall was, and she just kind of disappeared mid-conversation with someone. It was funny for about 2 seconds, then we heard her land on the wood pile and we all rushed to help her. There was a doorway where she thought the wall was, and she just kind of disappeared mid-conversation. I can't stop laughing. Went to a friend's house party around 7 years ago. There were at least 100 people in a 2 up 2 down house. Most people in a room witnessing a girl attempting to fit a pretty big telescope in her pee. It was messed up. Was at a party in high school. It was a pretty big party. People everywhere. I walk into the laundry room to a large group of people. About 15. They were all huddled around a dog kennel with a large bloodhound and two collies inside. They were laughing hysterically yelling about some kind of initiation. Perplexed I asked what this initiation was. 
Then one guy who I don't think I had even met before proceeded to pull his pants down past his butt and press his cheeks against the metal cage. The dogs all happily licked this kid's butt. I turned around and walked out. Weird crap. Don't even know what this initiation was for. Truthfully I expected that to get a lot weirder. A pregnant girl drinking and doing lines of coke. If you can't handle me at my worst. As the party was winding down, my friend was passed on the sofa. He suddenly got up making some grunting sounds, proceeded to stumble right round the coffee table in front of him and back to the couch. He then pulled down his jeans and boxers and sat back down. The sound of runny turd squelching between his butt and that leather couch will haunt me for the rest of my life. I went to a party in high school that made me believe in mass hysteria similar to wartime Germany. I've never seen so many normal become so destructive on the turn of a dime. This chick who was kind of a bee threw a house party while her parents were out of town. A lot of the school showed up. Guess she thought too many people were there and so she announces that she called the cops. This didn't sit well with people for some reason and everyone basically rioted. I'm in the basement and see one kid playing golf through the glass panes of the French doors, and then throwing the TV remote through the ones he missed. I pass a bathroom and a guy is standing on the sink, jumps down smashing through all the drawers that he opened and then awkwardly putting the drawers back in like nothing happened. Then he starts cutting the bottoms of the shampoo bottles out and arranging them like normal. I make my way to the stairs to see a portly kid run down them, use the couch at the bottom as a trampoline and slam into the drywall, leaving a nice Mexican sized hole. Upstairs in the kitchen, one kid from band class is emptying spice bottles up in the back of the cutlery drawer because frick oregano, and then he grabs some tin foil, throw it in the microwave and set it for 10 minutes and walk away. People start escaping out of the back deck yard because it opened to a big field and an easy escape from the cops. One of the neighbors was outside yelling at everyone and this guy walks out with a stack of dinner plates and proceeds to throw them into the darkness. And one directly at the neighbor. A group of guys were standing on the deck trying to make sure everyone was with them. But they realize they are missing one and it was too hard to go back in through the door while everyone is flooding out. So one guy throws a lawn chair through the glass window, and their freaking buddy comes bounding out like he somehow psychically knew the path was made for him. At this point in the chaos, I'm like frick this and I'm up climbing over the wooden fence which is the only way out, but some people cannot make it over the fence so they start to push the entire fence over. This fence was also every neighbor's fence as it was all connected, but it just buckled over like some kind of cheap zombie speed bump. And that was the day I learned of the innate violence of man. Edit. Thank you very much for the gold. Edit 2. Double gold. Thank you stranger. Edit 3. Triple gold. Thank you Senna. Edit 4. CCC combo breaker. Thanks for the quadruple gold mate. Edit 5. Cinco de Mayo. I'm starting to feel like Bernie Sanders over here. Thanks again for the gold. A drunk naked guy holding a weasel singing happy birthday to it. Stay clear of ever clear. Weasels have birthdays too. We were having a party at our house and one of the guests got a little out of hand. He started breaking beer bottles on the floor and dancing in the shards of glass in his bare feet. The dance floor cleared and a circle formed around him, watching as he began rolling around on the floor cutting himself on the glass. One of my housemates started yelling at him to get out and he turned to her and said, Stop censoring my art. I found the person who knew GG Lin. A party I threw back in college I went to take a pee. I found there was vomit on ceiling of my bathroom. Minutes later my TV was on fire. Edit. Okay. Story 2. This was like 2 months after the previously mentioned party. I was throwing a Christmas party and my friend, let's call Travis to protect his identity, came over and decided that we should pre-game at the bar across the street. He tells the bartender hey, well have a shot of whiskey for every whiskey you have named after an animal. It was a small bar, and I cut myself off after we ran out of animals. So he decided to move on to whiskey named after people. We walk back to my place while my roommate is letting everyone in. I should mention my friend Travis has never met any of the people at my party. He's absolutely s-faced, telling people he plays fiddle in a Rush cover band. A few hours go by and he's nowhere to be seen. His wallet and keys are in my room, 
so I'm wondering if he wandered to one of the neighboring parties. His car is still in the parking lot so I figure he's not too far away. I keep calling him and calling him to no answer. I find his vest jacket though behind my bed. Finally, he calls back and leaves a voicemail. It goes like this, comma beep, and I was banging my teacher's daughter. Hey Ryan, I tease freaking Travis. If you're done partying you're the biggest P I've ever met. Call me back. I finally get a hold of him. Me. Travis where the frick are you? Travis. Dude, why do all women drive Scion TCs? Click. I don't hear from him again after that. It was about 3 days later that I was at work at my local grocery store doing produce. I hear over the intercom. Produce. Line 1. Lowe's produce. This is Ryan. Travis. Ryan it's Travis. I'm in New Orleans and I don't know how I got here. I'm woke up on some stranger's sofa and they're feeding me breakfast. I need money to get home. I live in Baltimore, Maryland by the way. He somehow without his wallet or keys or car made it to New Orleans. He has no idea to this day how he got down there. Edit 3. Last story. Not as long. Me and my friend CJ and Chad are at my buddy Lou's place. Lou and his father are out of town in Germany and CJ is watching his place while they're gone. CJ calls the two of us over. We proceed to get absolutely hammered, killing a bottle of cheap vodka each. Rickle off to be exact. At some point Ramstein comes on and Chad does the till hammer and decides he wants to be on fire. So I'll let Chad on fire. His shirt. While CJ filmed on Louis camera. Chad was fine. His shirt wasn't. Louis saw the footage on his camera when he came home and just assumed he was so drunk he didn't remember filming it. He found out two years later when we were together that this happened while we were at his house when he was out of the country. I may have had a drinking problem in the past. I think the lack of concrete details makes this better. The reader is left on his own to imagine how this might have happened. At one Halloween party I watched one dude who was wearing Misfits Fassa paint. Drop one of those spinner fireworks into a can of beer, which it burned through quite quickly, creating a cloud of noxious smoke in an unventilated room. Started firing Roman candles at some teens hanging out down the block from the house the party was at. Almost got his butt kicked. And, slowly over the course of the evening, smudged his makeup and became a panda. Panzig. Everyone fricked up on various substances. Suddenly hear giggling coming from the bathroom, assuming two people freaking but dang I needed to pee so I went in anyway. Turns out it was two stoners sharing ice cream they stole from the guy whose house it was freezer. They then took so much effort trying to hide the empty carton when they passed several conveniently placed trash cans. Was playing for sport at a party and it got so intense we all flipped the table. Then in the confusion my mate fell on the ground, and my other mate took the opportunity to silently punch him twice in the face, and then sprinted off. Always reminded me of when you rile up a dog so much it gets so excited it sprints around the backyard growling and yapping at anything. My father found my brother passed out in his bed, which is pretty normal really, except that there were no sheets and no blankets. Just my brother shivering in his boxer shorts covering himself with an oven rack. Apparently he'd stumbled home from a party and the sheets were in the wash, so in his drunkenness, he did the only logical thing and pulled the grilling rack from the oven to use as a blanket. Gotta love drunk logic. A horse just chilling in the kitchen of a high-rise apartment in Manhattan. Once at a family party I saw two deaf men signing to each other, but at the same time getting much drunker. The signs just became slower and blurrier and the last I saw of them they were just hugging. Worked at an Irish pub that once hosted a party for a deaf organization. 150-200 drunken deaf people is one of the more surreal experiences you could ever encounter. So much alcohol and so much silence. A girl charging 10 bucks a pop to let guys eat her pee. There was a crowd of like 15 guys taking turns and cheering each other on. I'm like WTF I don't think you guys understand how prostitution works. How unsanitary. Cops showed up at this house party. My friends and I thought it was a good idea to physically smash out every light bulb in the house with a baseball bat to make it seem like no one was home. We could have just turned them all off. Party in an apartment our senior year of college. We were very heavily imbibing all sorts of alcohol in a race format. Well one of the rules was if you puked, your team, three people in total, were disqualified. 
One of the kids, easily the most insane drunk I've ever met, pukes in the kitchen sink. As a joke we say if he eats it they won't be disqualified. God is my witness he scoops up a handful and downs it. Immediately 5 of us run downstairs, outside into the snow and puke. To his credit, he didn't puke again and kept drinking. That image is etched in all of our minds. One dude ate the 7 layer bean dip, with only his hands. I work in the AV industry. Years ago I worked at a big hotel that did conventions and such. One week there was a burn survivors conference. Hundreds of people from around the country that had survived some of the worst injuries imaginable. Think surviving a plane crash but sustaining horrible burns over 95% of their body from the jet fuel. Or being caught in a burning vehicle. These folks were missing limbs. Their entire faces in some instances. Horrible breathing issues from having inhaled superheated air and smoke at the time of their injuries. I learned quickly that these folks were really sensitive about being called survivors rather than victims and by god they earned whatever title they preferred. Met people that week who had found a way to be happy living with injuries I could not comprehend even surviving. Let alone healing and coping with every single day. Anyway the last night was a banquet feast and party. Open bar. As the night progressed people got more and more inebriated and relaxed. Dancing. Cutting loose. Hooking up. The standard things that happen at a conference when people come from around the world and have free hotel rooms and unlimited alcohol. I saw all the usual stuff like the lady puking in the bushes outside. The way too into it white guy dancing. The hook up in the hallway before heading upstairs. Just really heavy petting outside the elevator. The most surreal thing I saw was the late night after party in the hot tub up outside on the 5th floor when I went to sneak a cigarette. It seemed like just about all of them had neglected to bring a swimsuit and decided to just strip down instead. Again, a common occurrence at conventions but more bizarre than I was used to because in the pile of clothes around the hot tub were wigs and prosthetic limbs that people didn't want to get wet. It was certainly strange to witness but it honestly made me really happy. These folks had overcome things in their lives that most of us could never imagine and I was so glad they could get together and cut loose in a place without people, other than me and a few banquet servers, staring at them. I actually flirted hardcore with a lady I saw walking from the banquet ballroom to the bar dance floor ballroom that night. She was gorgeous and dressed in some kind of amazing dress that showed off her figure and did nothing to hide to scarring over her entire back, shoulders, and up one side of her neck. She was also missing her right arm but wasn't wearing a prosthetic. I thought her confidence in wearing an open back ball gown that put her scars completely on display was sexy. She did not return my flirtations. TLDR. Burn Survivors Conference turned into a legit party on the final night including drunken dancing and hookups in the hallway of the hotel. After reading this thread, I realized I have an amazingly normal life. I'm thinking the same but I'm also thinking my life is incredibly boring in comparison. I was at a party in college, sitting on the front porch sipping a beer, when someone was forcibly ejected, thrown down the steps onto the concrete. Dude was fine dusted himself off, turned around and ran back in, came out 2 minutes later, unaccosted, with a girl on arm, they calmly walked down the steps he was so recently thrown down, made a hard left into the bushes, and immediately went to bone town, they thought 3 foot tall shrubs would hide them completely, I saw, everyone on the porch saw, everyone walking down the busy college town street saw, the public safety officer arrived, ask the girl you good she says oh frick yes he proceeds to let them finish, then asks them to stay put, calls the cops, both get arrested, edit, obligatory thanks for the gold, stranger post, although I'm pretty sure my knight in gilded armor is someone I know, you can't jack, by our eye or, to clarify, I have zero idea as to how he got back in and out without being destroyed. My guess is he nat 20 a stealth roll, then a charisma roll. Clearly he got laid a lot more than I did. At least they were allowed to finish. My good friend from home visited me at college so my roommates and I threw a party. He is a great guy but a little odd. Thing is he has a foot fetish. As soon as one of my roommates found out he stopped the music and propositioned all the girls in the room to let my friend suck their toes. At the time my friend had never actually done anything with a girl involving his fetish so he was super excited and super drunk. One girl was brave enough to volunteer for $20 to let him suck her toes for a minute or so. 
At this point the whole party stopped and was watching. As soon as that poor girl got her socks off my buddy went to town. We're talking all five toes in the mouth. At some point people started chanting. Toe job. Toe job. Toe job it was hilarious. The girl wasn't too into it but my friend woke up the next day and said it was the night of his life. TLDR. Friend with foot fetish sucks girl's feet for 20 bucks for the first time ever. Two Samoans showed up. They ran down the hall while using a fire extinguisher. Basically smoked out the rooms. I refilled my beer and went for a walk around the apartment complex. Sometime later I saw the two Samoans near a light pole. One was standing there watching the other one beat his head against the metal pole. I was drunk and amazed I was watching this. Pearl guy saw me and said beer with his bloody hand held out. I gave it to him and went on my merry to find another beer. Shortly after a cop shows up. He gets out of the car sees these giants and gets back in to call for backup. More police arrive they get arrested and the last I hear from them as they are put in the car was a crap. Next morning knock on the door. Football players from local community college. They ask if we saw two Samoans. We say yeah they got arrested. Figures and then they left. It was an interesting night. This wasn't too crazy but always left an impression on me. My friend decided he wanted a pineapple, so grabbed one from the kitchen, took it to the middle of the living room area where people were hanging out. He then yelled who wants pineapple, and ripped it in half with his bare hands. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Girl getting finger banged by a gay guy on the kitchen table while everyone was standing around. The weird thing was that no one seemed phased by it they just saw it and continued on with the party. In college I was at a huge house party on a Thursday night. My girlfriend claimed to have to study for a tough exam so I rolled out solo while she stayed in. This party was pretty rambunctious and wild, with people scattered throughout the two floors and a roof deck, and then BSP. At one point in the party I noticed that the bottom main floor was emptying out and I hear a lot of noise on the roof. So I head upstairs to see what's going on and all the guys and girls are hooting, hollering, cheering. ETC so I get closer to get a peek at what they are cheering, and then BSP, across the street in the third floor of an apartment building, slightly below our line of vision, there is a dude bending this girl over a bar stool type chair with her face near the window, it was dark out but there's a small amount of background light in the room and because of the lighting of the street light we can all see pretty clearly, as I focus in further, I see that it's my girlfriend getting her back blown out, and then BSP. In a fit of drunken anger I throw a half can of beer across the street and amazingly hit near the window enough that they both look up and see their audience across the street. Then they both seem to scatter and everyone on the roof cheers loudly, with only two or three people I know closely realizing that it's my girlfriend, and then BSP. I storm downstairs and wait outside the apartment building, until she finally exits 20 minutes later. I doubt she saw me in the crowd on the roof but she quickly found out I saw or at least knew as I cursed her out for 5 minutes and stormed back to the party. And then BSP. It was pretty awkward at the party when I returned. At least for half of the party who were sober enough to sort of realize what was going on. And proceeded to get drunker. Later that night I was approached by a decent looking girl who saw it all go down. And that kids, was the first time I ever received pity sex. The first, but not the last. Partied in Prague, awoken Vienna two days later. Had a credit card bill of more than 650 euros, a broken rib and a dog. I kept the dog. Roommate was throwing an after party. The noise became too much to bear. Got up to tell them to keep it down. Walked in the living room to see a bodybuilder friend of his wearing only my apron. Fisting his other bodybuilder's girlfriend from behind while she blew my roommate who was DJing on the turntables. Her boyfriend was in the corner of the room just watching and smiling. I didn't say a word and left to spend the remainder of the night at my parents place. It was a seen man. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.